What's up guys, it's your boy Alex here. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about the stimulus packages and more specifically towards the student loan portion. Now this does not pertain to me personally, but I think a lot of people out there, a lot of students or former students out there have student loans in order to pay for their higher education. So let's just get right into it. According to a CNBC article last month on March 13th was the start of student loan payment freeze that will last all the way to September 30th of 2020. On April 10th is when all companies who are associated with federally backed loans are supposed to automatically stop your payments from coming through. That means if you have a student loan that is federally backed for the next six months, you do not have interest accruing. Additionally, if you are still trying to make payments all of your payments will go directly to the principal that you owe. For these student loans, you will not have to apply for this program. It will be automatically done by April 10th or supposedly done by April 10th. I say supposedly because on April 10th is really the deadline your lender is supposed to stop your automatic payments for your education loan. If you want to really make sure that you are not making a payment in April because you want to take advantage of the interest-free leeway, then I would highly recommend you to go into your account and freeze slash cancel your automatic payments starting right now. But before you do that, you need to understand which type of loans are eligible. What kind of loans are exactly qualified? For the most part, what you really need to know is that if your student loan is federally held, to get a little bit more specific, the first type of loan is any direct federal loans. The second type is any Parent PLUS loans. The third type is Federal Family Education Loans, F-F-E-L-S. Yeah, 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 the, that, that's the acronym. So F-F-E-L-S loans, there's only a small percentage of this, mainly because not all of these loans are federally held. If there is any confusion about whether your loan is eligible, log into the Federal Student Aid Loan website and make sure that your loan is federally held. If you see like on your statement that your loan is getting like charged or it is upheld with the U.S. Department of Education, then you are more than likely eligible for this freeze. Additionally, you could also make sure by calling your servicer or call this number right here. How about private loans? From what I've read so far, you're not exactly eligible for this. You have to talk to your lender. It really depends on your lender at this point if you have a private loan. If you are experiencing any hardship, talk to your lender. Make sure that they know that and ask for any like any type of aid that they have. More than likely, a lot of these will have some type of aid. They will either lower your interest rate or help you like doing the same thing, like freeze for a certain amount of months and it will not hurt your credit. It will just, you won't have any interest. You just have to talk to them yourself. This will not be automatic, like what these publicly federal funded loans are. So talk to your lender. Additionally, if you haven't heard so already, the interest rates have dropped down. If you haven't done so already, if you are asking for your lender to refinance, it's probably the best time to do so mainly because a lot of this interest rates from private lenders are lowered uh, with the exception of mortgages. So if you have a federal loan with a private lender, ask for a refinance. If that's not a good scenario, then call your lender to see if they have some kind of program to help you lower down the payments or help you freeze somewhat. You just have to talk to them and this is a whole negotiation process. Just call your lender. Back on the non-private lenders and the federally backed loans, what if these guys, your loan provider, your lender screws up somehow? Like they start charging interest even though they're not supposed to? This is exactly what I think you should do. You should save a copy of your monthly February statement, your March statement, and also your April statement. What this allows you to do if you have three months worth, especially when it's the like the start of all this happening, it will allow you to have a good comparison. So this is an example that I just made up right now. 
say on February, you made your February payment and your balance came out to be $12,000. And in March, you pay like a monthly automatic payment of like $200. You will come out to be $11,000 and $800 left, right? So according to the law, starting on March 13th, your lender is not supposed to charge you interest. Your balance left because you paid $200 in March for your loan is $11,800. In April, whenever your monthly statements come through to you, it should be the same, $11,000 and $800. When you have those three months worth of statements, you can see that it transitions. From February to March, it's like a regular payment, but starting on March 13th, to all the way to September. Your balance should be the same all the way through September 30th if you decided to just cancel your automatic payments or if your lender decides to cancel your automatic payments. So it should stay the same all the way through September 30th. And remember, this is for federally backed loans, public loans, and not private loans. So you just have to remember that and make sure you are eligible. Go into your website and make sure this is like good to go and call your lender if you are super like anxious about it and whatever, just make sure that happens. In the case where you see your April statement increased in your balance, you should call your lender and say that you have a federally held loan and you are supposed to not pay your interest on this. You're not supposed to have any interest accruing based on whatever stimulus packages that uh, the government passed. So just make sure you guys are on the same page because sometimes the lenders do make mistakes and you just have to keep them accountable. And then the last question you may be asking is if I stop making payments for my loan, even though it's interest-free, will it hurt my credit score? The short answer is no. The law prohibits that from doing that and it essentially is telling the lender and the credit reporting companies that you are making payments normally. Like that's that's essentially the blanket statement that's out there right now. That is all for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, comment down below or if you need any clarification. So everybody in whoever's watching this and just the community in general will have a little bit more, more information and just things like that because you know, it's helpful during these times when everybody's freaking out and things are not going as planned. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and check out my description if you want to know the article that I pulled a lot of this information about so you could do your own research. In addition to that, I have a lot of affiliation links down below. Obviously, with affiliation links, I do make a little bit of either uh, stocks, um, a little bit of points, things like that, that benefit me because it's a referral link. It's all down below. You can check it out. I highly recommend this for a lot of people because I personally use it. So I think it is helpful for many others as well. And that's why I have links down there. Thank you guys for watching again. See you later, dude.